Barnaby. I'm your host, Tommy Howell. Hi, it's Tommy. Hi, Stevie. Welcome aboard, and um, well, tell us about uh, Broken Sea Audio and uh, what the current state of audio drama is, and what it is, and why we should listen to it. Right. Um, oof, some big <laughs> questions to start with. Good yeah. stuff. <laughs> keep, you, keep you talking for a little bit. Well, yeah, we'll do, yeah. Right, well, Broken Sea Audio Productions was, um, it's a fan-based group. Um, we don't charge for any of our audio. Everything that we produce is free. And we all do it, we're basically a bunch of like-minded individuals who um, we share and make friendships by getting creative, shall we say. <laughs> And um, we're all sort of brought together by the love of this audio drama medium. I mean, certainly in terms of what brought me to the dance, in terms of um, audio drama. Um, I remember many, 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 many years ago, I heard um, the original Austin Wells radio production of War of the Worlds, which just absolutely blew me away. Um, Another one that really inspired yeah, me was... started it all, I suppose. <laughs> Sorry? Say again? That was really, you know, the, the, big, the big event that uh, got everybody's attention, I guess. Oh, it certainly was. It even got Adolf Hitler's attention. <laughs> he actually talked about it at, um, when, the, when the Winter Olympics was on in Germany. Um, oh. Adolf Hitler mentioned it in his opening speech at the opening ceremony. So it even got Adolf Hitler's attention. That's how... <laughs> Huge it was. Wow. Um, and then I was listening to things like um, the Jeff Wayne War of the Worlds production as well, the musical version, which I also really thoroughly enjoyed. And um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was another huge one for me. Um, absolutely adored that series from start to beginning, right the way through all five of the um, series. Yeah, I read the books. And I, I... I didn't know there was audio for that until recently, so I need to. I guess I need to go find that. Oh, you definitely need to go find them because <laughs> they are absolutely exceptional. Um, anyhow, um, one of the things that that, that um, I kind of came to, um, certainly from my point of view, I came to audio drama in kind of a roundabout way. Um, I have a friend who's a, um, a published horror author. And um, he wrote a short story called Mr. Farnaby's Head, which <laughs> was kind of written, um, I guess, you know, about what he knew about me and what my fears are. And um, we were talking a little while, you know, about perhaps maybe doing a recording of it and maybe having me, you know, the real Mr. Farnaby reading out Mr. Farnaby's Head and actually releasing it on his website, which okay. is when um, I kind of got. Um, we kind of came into contact with Paul Mannering from Broken Sea, oh, okay. and um, Paul offered to produce it, and so we said, yeah, fine, yeah, that sounds great, you know, so we'll give that a go, and it was released as part of Broken Sea's Halloween season, um, and it wasn't long after that before people realized, um, or once I started to get to know people, um, it became obvious to them that, um, that I'm, I'm actually a qualified sound engineer, and music producer. It really shows. I mean, in the oh, episodes I've listened to, <laughs> it's really, really amazing. Well, thank you very much. Um, and as I say, what it is is, um, you know, it, it, I was kind of asked if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to have a go at producing audio drama. And there is huge differences between producing music and producing radio plays. Um, you, you, certainly in terms of where you put things within the mix, um, there, there, there's, it's, it's a totally different skill set, quite frankly. And so it took a little bit for me to, to sort of make that transition across. And uh, then I came into contact with Alexa Chipman, okay. um, who was discussing modelling the series um, set in Oxford. Um, so explain the, what that is a little bit more. And when I saw yeah, she, when I saw that and the spelling of it, and then I heard how it was pronounced. It's like okay, that just <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, it's an original series, completely original um, comedy fantasy piece um, set in the nineteen thirties in Oxford. 
there's a giant rift opens up in Oxford and all of these mythical creatures and characters come through and wreak havoc. And certainly in the later seasons, um, some of the characters have gone through the rift from from Oxford into the mythical realms as well. Oh, okay. So, I saw that there was an episode where they went to 1940 from 1930. So, so they, go, gone, they go beyond that. Yeah, there was uh, one particular scene, I think, in one of the episodes where they went to the First World War as well. Oh, wow. So they went forward in time yeah, as well through the rift, which was interesting. Um, because and again, I mean that was that was fascinating stuff. And to be honest, I've I've not looked personally not looked back. You know, I've yeah. uh, I've kept up with the production side of things. I've gone on to produce Doctor Who, Escape from New York. Um, I did the first audio drama based on Torchwood. Um, and when I say the first one, I mean I do, I truly do mean the first one. It was it came out before um, the official ones. Oh. So that that was kind of cool. Wow. <laughs> it was a nice thing to have on your CV, you know. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So the BBC is still producing audio dramas or radio plays as new material. Um, yeah, BBC Radio 4, I think, are still doing radio plays. And, okay. of course, um, Big Finish are releasing... Um, audio plays, you know, on CD to buy as well, you know, so there's, 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 there's the BBC is still making them, I yeah. guess. I don't know of any any radio network in the US that is doing anything like that for broadcast. Right. Which so that's actually, why this, all this internet explosion of stuff has been so mm -hmm. amazing. Well, I think, you know, I mean, I, I actually find that quite surprising because... Um, I mean, at the end of the day, there's, there's there's a ton of audio dramas based on sort of the Marvel comic oh, books yeah. and things like that, you know, and, and so it surprises me that there isn't a station that's broadcasting them. You know, I mean, I am aware of one station, which is um, Sonic Society, who are out in Canada at the moment. I believe they get is that a real... I believe they get syndicated across part of the US as well. Uh, right. Yeah, and that's that's specifically dedicated to audio drama. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, wow. Well that that's about you know what I'm aware of. Um anyhow, when the um one of the one of the reasons why I wanted to, to do more in the way of audio drama is because I'm I am i am looking at some of the, the particularly the Hollywood blockbusters and you kinda get the plot in the first ten minutes. And then it's it sort of reiterates the plot in case you missed it the first five or six times over, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> and I'm I'm seeing TV series are going that way as well. And so I knew that I could do better, or at least I had a dream that I could do better. <laughs> as for whether I did or not, is you know up to everybody else in the world, you know, to decide. Um, but. And so that that's kind of what really brought me to the dance, and and you know particularly in respect of um, children's TV, you know it's all very badly animated, you know cheap cartoons, you know, and very little in the way of real drama, you know, and and things like Maudlin, for example, uh, um, it's when Alexa started to write Maudlin, she set herself a goal that this would be a family series. That you could sit down together with the entire family and sit and listen to it and have some fun with it, you know. So you you won't hear any swear words, you won't hear any really aggressive, violent stuff on there. It's it's pure family entertainment. So. Right, and that's I mean part of that's the setting contributes to that greatly. I mean, you're set in um, a college mm -hmm. in the 1930s, so you expect it to be a gentler time <laughs> in those respects I suppose well yeah absolutely yeah and and you know particularly given the the people that were that were there back then as well people like um, Tolkien yeah he's uh, a historical character that's actually in the series yes he is yeah <laughs> as is CS Lewis oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they've both made appearances on the show that's that's been and, fun uh, and the voice actor that we have playing Tolkien, um, he actually, um, we actually managed to get hold of some um, actual recordings of Tolkien speaking. So he, 
it's, yeah, it's, he's, it's, he's wow. Yeah, he's actually doing an impression of of the real Tolkien. <laughs> so we Amazing. try to keep it. We try to keep it very, very authentic. Wow. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's been great. It's it's been great fun, and, and um, you know, I mean, you know, from the humble beginnings of you know all of these old classic series, you know, the Orson Welles stuff. I mean, one of my favourite sort of um, all-time radio shows was one called um, Aliens in the Mind or Aliens of the Mind depending on what part of the world you're in and it had uh, Vincent Price was in it as was Peter Cushion and it's oh. when you listen to it it's almost the forerunner of Doctor Who um, so it, it, that, that is a really great series as well you know and when you think where the medium's gone from then to now I mean, you know, we we were chatting briefly before uh, before we started here, you know, before we went live on air, and right. um, you know, I mean, we've <laughs> we've gone from sort of old sort of mono mixes into you know, I mean, I I, I use the whole of the stereo field when I'm producing, as does people like um, Bill Holweg, um, Elaine Barrett, for example, are all. You know, really good examples of people that you, you know use a lot of space within the mix. Um, I'm trying to take the next step forward again by going into sort of 5.1 surround sound and maybe beyond that. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I suppose the sky's the limit as to where it's going to go. Wow, that uh, that sounds amazing. So, um, what about uh, Broken Sea? You mentioned a few of the shows on there. So, what are some of the other mm -hmm. current productions? And are there casting opportunities for any of our viewers or or whatever that want to try to get involved? Um, well, casting's done usually via our um, we have a Facebook group and we also have a Yahoo group as well. And casting calls are usually put out there. Okay. Um, there's also a Yahoo group called Audio Auditions as well. Okay. Where casting calls are posted. Um, in terms of other shows to listen to, I mean, like you know, we've already mentioned um, modeling and Doctor Who, yes. Doctor Who, which I also produce, um, Escape from New York. We've got um, we have Planet another really sorry. You have a Planet of the Apes, right? We do, yeah. In fact, we did uh, we did Planet of the Apes, and we've done um, Beneath Planet of the Apes as well. Plus, we've also got um, the original scriptwriter that did the UK stage production of um, Planet of the Apes has actually given us permission to actually. Breaking up. You probably need to start again. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't catch what you said there. Well, okay. You dropped out a lot in the last minute or so. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping that picks up. Um, yeah, what I was saying was that we've not only have we done Planet of the Apes, we've done Beneath Planet of the Apes. Um, there was also, I think it was the uh, sort of late seventies, I believe, um, and I could be completely wrong on that. But um, anyway, we did a. Um, back, way back then, there was actually a, a stage production of Planet of the Apes um, that went um, that sort of toured around the UK. Uh, we had permission from the guy that wrote the scripts and actually directed the stage production to do an audio drama based on his script, which is uh, absolutely phenomenal. Um, we have other sort of original series as well. Um, we, we're kind of a mix of both, actually, of both fan-based um, stuff that you might be familiar with and also original material as well. Um, so, for example, we've also got series like Jake Sampson, Monster Hunter, as well, which is a you know terrific fun series, and um, you know we've got many many other bits and pieces on there. Uh, it's kind of a good range of stuff, you know. We we've got stuff on there as well that that's, uh, that's set up specifically sort of for family entertainment. Um, we've also got stuff on there that's um, uh, you know absolutely not family entertainment. <laughs> Things like Escape from New York, for example. <laughs> <laughs> um, which pretty much inspired um, a whole rating system. So what is that <laughs> one? That, what is uh, Bill Holwig series about the D and D tavern, basically? Sorry, Bill Holwig has a series that's set in a tavern in. 
Oh, yeah, Grog and Griffin. Yeah, that's um, Griffin. yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's just this massive sort of fantasy drama sort of. Imagine Ari Howard, you know, yeah. type stuff. You know, sword and sorcery stuff. So you have some uh, Robert E. Howard stuff on there too, right? There's some uh, Conan. Mm, we did have. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. Um, we had, um, yeah, we, we we had. Um, I mean, I don't mind talking about this. Uh, we we did have um, Conan, Queen of the Black Coast. We produced that as an audio series, and um, we were we were ordered to take it down off the site <laughs> for copyright infringement. So I'm not going to go any more into that. <laughs> But it Someone was just, a bit of a labor. Of, it was a bit of a labor of love, and uh, it was a shame. Yeah. But never mind. Having said so some that, some of that um, stuff is in the public domain, and some of it is not. So, I guess you have to. And some of it may not be in the public domain where you are, but it is where we are. Or yeah, this is true. Yeah, this is true. And I mean, in the case of um, in the case of Conan, um, the Ari Howard's Conan novels and such like are public domain in most countries. Um, right. What's not public in the main is the Conan name. Oh, okay. so you, you can't I think I release heard about anything. That yeah. yeah, you can't release anything with the Conan name on it. So you do have to kind of be very careful with what you do. You know, um, I mean, certainly for us in terms of things like our Doctor Who series, for example, um, <clears throat> because we don't charge and we don't make any money from anything that we do. Um, the BBC tends to leave us to our own devices somewhat, and I suspect they, they, they must just think that it's it's adding to you know a little bit of free publicity for their own shows. So you know a little bit of scratch your back, etc., etc. Yeah. You know, <laughs> some rights holders don't see it that way. So sorry. So do you have any advice for people that want to get into audio drama? Oh yeah, I mean, just a um, couple of bits of advice. Yeah, F first of all is um, don't take too much on. It's v it's very addictive. It's very very easy to take too many projects on, to do too much, and to wind up with no family life, and <laughs> you just get absorbed into this huge creative world, you know. So yeah, that that'd be my first bit of advice. My second bit of advice is to just quite simply is to just join some of the audio groups. I mean, we've got um, obviously there's Broken Sea, you know, there's there's, there's numerous other things like Gypsy Audio, for example, you know, and you um, can get in there, get involved with the casting calls. Maybe it's just chat to people who are already doing this, you know. And there's a, um, what is it? Audio Drama Talk is that that's the forum where there's a lot of a lot of that kind of information for other shows and casting. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that's around as well. You know, maybe it's even another. You know, listen, swing on over to Sonic Society and give them a listen as well, because they do a lot of features on different shows. So very good. Let's see, is there anything else you want to tell us about uh, what you're doing at uh, Broken Sea? Um. Yeah, I mean, I've had a bit of a, uh, I've had a bit of a, a break um, from sort of various productions for about the last year due to some medical stuff. So I'll be, you know, coming back to hopefully the full, full-blown production sometime soon. Um, so we've got more Doctor Who coming, more modelling coming. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces. There's hopefully there'll be a second series of Escape from New York coming as well. Um, this is this is all just from my end, you know. Those are all backed uh, up, waiting for you to to. Yeah, they're together. all just backed up, waiting for me to get involved again, you know. Um, <laughs> one of the other things I'm doing as well at the moment is I'm I'm actually doing an album as well, a music album. Okay. So, and that one that should be interesting as well. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how that goes down because um, it will. This one will be a commercial release. And it won't be released via Broken Sea, but it will. It, it's it's going to be a commercial release with all the proceeds going to a cancer charity. Okay. So um, a good a good friend of mine. Um, a few years ago, I went to visit him, and um, you know, we, 
we got very, 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 very close because of his involvement with in the audio field. And <clears throat> he, he's, you know, sadly he passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and we were working on an album together. And um, I'm, I'm anticipating finishing the album, and then, like I said, releasing it as a commercial release with all the proceeds going to a cancer charity. So that should be fun. Um, so, and so, is the music you know, be related to any of the shows? Sorry, is the what, what kind of music is going to be on that album? So. It's um, it's electronic music. Um, but it's electronic music. How, it, it's it's coming from a different angle. Each track on the album tells a tells a story, um, but just with um, sound effects and such like. So it's it's kind of difficult to describe. It's it's sort of a very very ambient type album. So each song is a different mood. So and certainly the second side of the album is uh, more orchestral. Best. So it's there's um, I, I suppose a good example would be um, the yeah the second track on the album is one called Fourteenth Street and uh, Fourteenth Street is in, obviously in New York and I imagined that during the course of this piece of music that you'd have a um, a trip from one tube station to another tube station so you've got a like a journey from one station to another right and so it's kind of mixed that way so you kind of you feel like you're on that you're on that tube train so it's just uh, it's yes. one of them things wow. you know so it's I, I want it to be um, I, I've been holding back on it because it's been a little bit difficult for me to you know to, to get my head around actually working on this at the moment um, you know, with losing him so you know not that long ago, you know, and so. <clears throat> but when it comes out, it should be fun, and and yeah, I suspect that some of the tracks will wind up on some of the shows I produce <laughs> as well, because <laughs> clearly I own copyright. So. So where is that going to be available to purchase? Um, I'm not sure yet. Um, I'll I'll deal with that side of things as and when it's um, you know, as and when the album's finished. So, Very good. it'll be online though somewhere. So, are you doing? <laughs> are you going to do a Kickstarter or anything like that for it? No, no. Well, I'm, you no. see, the thing is, is that I don't actually need funds in order to produce it because um, I mean, I'm actually sat in my own studio now. So, you know, I don't have to pay for studio time. I can I can work on things as and when I can do a few minutes here and there as I get the time. Yeah, um, so. I don't actually need the I don't actually need any funds as such to to sort of get it out there, you know. And and obviously with the likes of things like iTunes and such like as well, you can release stuff in MP3 format as well. You don't have to pay for CD pressing or right all that other stuff as well. So yeah, no, it should be. Um, I'm I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what people make of it, you know. Because I mean, I have all of I have all of my friends' takes already recorded. So it's, you know, um, it'll be out there soon, I reckon. <laughs> Maybe within the next year or two. <laughs> Planning that far out, okay. Well, yeah, well, I have to, because, um, I mean, at one point I was, um, and, you know, Bill Holweg's exactly the same, you know. Um, at one point we were, um, Bill and I, in terms of production on audio drama, we were booked up solid for two or three years. <laughs> Right, wow. So it's um, you know, and then getting other people sort of getting in touch, asking us to produce their shows and stuff like that as well. <laughs> you know, and we're having to sort of turn people down. So have you been training people to do this? To train other people to do it? Um, audio drama production. Um, I've I've given a lot of advice out to people. Yeah, over the years. Um. I've never run a training course as such, but I have given advice and I've I've um, I've listened to people's mixes and given them feedback on mixes that they've sent me and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So, but no formal training for I've I've not run any sort of formal training courses or anything. That's just that's. Um, I think Google has a new uh, 
a, a feature that's adjacent to the Hangout feature where you can do mm -hmm. mentoring like that. I don't remember what it's called, though. That could be interesting to, to sort of explore. Yeah, it lets you see what the other person is doing, and they can see what you're doing. Right. With a little bit of screen sharing and video conferencing. Ah, right. Oh, okay, so it's got the screen share. Google Help Out, maybe something like that. Google Help Out. Right. I suspect I'd have a, a little bit of issues running it, though, <laughs> if I've got my production software up, because um, it is extremely it system intensive. <laughs> I mean, I have, um, like, um, I mean, the computer that I'm using at the moment, I mean, it's a, it's a quad core. And it's, uh, you know, I think I've got 16 gigs of RAM in it. You know, wow. and I'm, I'm eating the resources up all the time. <laughs> so, I suppose if I was just doing a small and you're not even, And you're not even doing high-def video. <laughs> no, I, I'm not, no. It's all in the audio side of things, yeah. It's just eating up resources. Like wow. I said, um, when I did... Um, the last episode of Escape from New York, it was 450, 500 audio tracks, and it just it just ate up resources big time. In fact, I had to I had to actually um, normally when I do sort of a, an episode of Doctor Who or Bordelin, I'll put the in, I'll fit the entire mix for the entire episode in RAM at the same time. You know, so okay. I'll, I'll I'll have the whole. You know, when many people do this, the mix the mix it scene by scene. Um, okay. I don't. I, I actually do it from start to finish in chronological it a, order. It gives it a consistency, I guess. To do it that yeah, way. it does. I mean, that, that's my take on it as well. And also, um, when, when you, you get to a certain point in a script where there's supposed to be a surprise for the audience, um, I get that surprise too. Because normally when I'm sent a script to produce, um, I'll read it there and then, and then I won't read it again for a year or two so it's all <laughs> until new. I actually go into production. And so when things are meant to be a surprise for the audience, they're actually a surprise for me. And I think for one reason or another, it comes across in the mix, the final product. Okay. Uh, I know it sounds a bit weird, you know, but <laughs> I promise you it does. It works. Um, no idea why, it just does. <laughs> I guess it's my own uh, subconscious <laughs> making me do things in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah, it's like well, you have to well, you have to build tension, I guess, with uh, music yeah, this is and true. stings and things like that. So. Yeah, this is true. This is true. So, I mean, a, a lot of the things that I do, um, I mean, I'll put things in there. I'll put little spot effects in there that I know that people won't consciously hear. But they'll hear them on a subconscious level, and it helps to build up the realism. Right. Like, um, uh, I'll, let me give you a good example of that. Yeah. Like that uh, sword fighting scene where you said there's footsteps. That's why there were there were footsteps. I remember the sword fights, but <laughs> there were footsteps. Yeah. Every sword fighting scene I've produced has been footsteps in it. <laughs> so you got you got to you got to do all the footwork to to keep the sword moving. I guess you just don't. Yeah, you do you absolutely. Just, it doesn't work otherwise, all the, does it? You, you hear know. all the clangs. That's it, yeah. Um, but I, I suppose a really good example of that would be on uh, one of the episodes of Maudlin. Um, a large part of the uh, episode was sat uh, was set on the um, on a riverbank, and so there was You're running water that you yeah, had to you keep had... from being overwhelming. <laughs> Yeah, you have running water, yeah, but I mean, you know, and there's, um, you also heard deer in the background as well, and um, people rowing boats up and down the water as well, and wow. um, I actually, at one point, I actually put, um, I put the sound of somebody casting out a fishing line <laughs> in there as well, and it only appears once in the whole episode. <laughs> that's, and, you know, that's how it would work. And the cool part is that um, Alexa's actually heard that episode, you know, maybe a dozen times. And she, she can't hear it. <laughs> she's never heard the fishing line being cast out. <laughs> and I think that's fantastic. Uh, you know, job well done. <laughs> Pat myself on the back there, I think. <laughs> so, 
but that's the type of thing that I put in the the, the sort of level of detail that I go to, you know. And I, I guess it's um, you know a lot of people might think I've gone a bit too far with that, you know. <laughs> you know, and they might be right, you know. <laughs> certainly, putting all this detail in does take a lot of time, you know. But personally, I just think it's worth it, you know. <laughs> awesome. Well, let me try to have you back on again later when we're ready to talk that kind of deep level of production. Uh, yeah, because, sure, yeah. Um, right now, it's, we're all just still in the exploratory and discovery phase and trying to get trying to get people interested in doing some of these things. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, and uh, people can go find your work at brokensea.com. Absolutely. Very good. Thanks, thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.